we never get too high, too low on preseason. Um, mm-hmm. I know even like last year we were we were talking about you know Justin's performance. We're like, listen, if he goes out there and he does bad, whatever. If he does, goes out there and does great, whatever. It's preseason, right? And he went out there and had like what a hundred yards on like three throws that that you know uh, screen to DJ Moore, and we came back and we're like, okay, whatever. Like it's it's preseason. Um, I've always kind of been that way throughout my my entire. Uh, fandom as a Bears fan and for some reason th- there's a little tickle inside right now I, I just I I don't want to like come out and hype it up but man you look you look at this kid and it's just like okay so you wonder if these skills from college will translate to the NFL right like I said preseason whatever against twos and threes but um but it's not against college anymore and he's just out there looking the same and and the same is pretty. Like Caleb Williams seems like he is processing things very, very well. I'm so pumped to see this kid go out in week one and play. And like I said, I try not to put my chips too much all in on the preseason games, but it is hard not to be excited right now from from my point of view. Cause I think I, I mean, I truly think that this kid's going to go out there and light it up. I really do. Um, I don't, I know there's always a chance of failure in this and that. I'm trying to envision scenarios where it happens. I mean, injury is the only thing that I can think of that's going to stop this kid. Yeah, I mean, you're you're saying you're super hyped up, and even then, we we talked about comparing stats and our predictions for his stats for the year, and I think I, mine shot up much more from seeing the preseason than yours did. So, I mean, I'm going to be the measured one here and like kind of try to be logical about why I'm so excited, but I'm freaking out right now. Internally, I'm freaking out with like how excited this looks because the reasons here, and this is, we've kind of reached these conclusions over the last few years talking about quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, we we've said this, that like the, the gap between college and pros for quarterbacks nowadays, it feels like it's getting smaller, right? Because college is more professional and the pros, you basically just like transition as opposed to like, it's a whole different game. Yeah, all the players are much better, but like you're playing the same kind of football nowadays more. So I think that was kind of indicative of his preseason so far is that at least you see that what his style is, it's going to work. So that's the positive that you saw. The other positives that I think you can kind of gain from freaking out about it is that he, he so far the worst part of Caleb Williams in the preseason is that he doesn't like hit the timing perfectly yet. Right. It's like that in rhythm in routine, like system type quarterback stuff. Like, but that makes perfect sense. Why the hell would he be a perfect system quarterback? He's been in this system for four months. It would make no sense for him to look sharp and, you know, neat and like he knows the playbook, like the back of his hand. And even then he's doing it pretty damn well. At least it just, the, the reasons to be excited is because you didn't see anything like that was a miracle. It's things that will translate from a preseason game into regular season games. Yeah. But I think the reason to be excited is because like we saw what he could do and it looks legitimate and it looks transferable. And so just like extrapolate what he did in this game over like 17, 18 games. If he's healthy, man, like the, I have my, we're going to do our predictions later, like statistically, but mine, mine shot up after seeing these games, mine shot up like a lot, like 20% when I think about it and I try and rationalize it, I guess what I kind of come to a conclusion with all this is I think, you know, with Justin, I always thought the ceiling was so, so high. His potential could be so high, but then I was like, but the floor seems a bit too low. Like when it's bad, it's really bad. It was like 80 Um, yards a game low. Yeah. I I don't, I think the floor with Caleb is really high. Like not only is the potential really high, but I think, the floor, the base, like the worst you're going to get from him is still going to be really pretty damn good compared to what we're used to here in Chicago. And that's why I'm excited because it's like, man, I don't want to see those games anymore where like we struggle to get a first down for an entire half. You know, I know in our conversations, uh, we were talking about, you know, sack numbers and this and that. And you, you said something that kind of stuck with me. You're like, dude, there's just some quarterbacks out there that won't get, will allow getting sacked. I mean, they all do, right? They also get sacked. Like, you can't help it. But, like, Tom Brady, if the left tackle gives up his pressure, throw the ball at the ground. Done. Next play. Like, you get certain, you know, a certain floor from some guys that's very beneficial overall to the football team and to the game that they're playing. And uh, that's what I'm kind of seeing from Caleb and feeling a little bit that, like, man, this kid, at minimum, 
is going to be pretty damn good. Yeah, I think you're getting like the hints of him being like a psycho in the best way that we always love, right? Like I watched a Joe Burrow interview the other day and he was like, I don't want to allow my family to sit next to me for 48 hours before a game day. And they were, he was like, why? Like, I just, I have only I'm a different certain, Joe. <laughs> yeah. I'm a different Joe. I have a certain amount of mental energy to expend in those 48 hours and I'm not going to be pleasant to be around. So like that made me respect Joe Burrow. I'm like, dude, you're psychotic in like the best way. That's awesome. Like you focus, you're, you know, yeah. you're focused, you're locked in. And then even Caleb blamed himself for that one sack that obviously probably wasn't really his fault. It might've been a bit of his fault, but like even then he blamed him, blamed him on himself. And then he said basically how he could fix the problem in the bad games. They'll have like 15, 20 points. Like I, I think they're just going to, you know, I think the team is just built too well to, to flop as hard as even last year's could have. Williams a deeper drop this time. All that, but if he can set his feet just a little bit more, he had enough time. Nice job avoiding here. Evades the pressure. Stepping up. Off platform. He does this so well, he typically makes the first guy miss. Now steps up. Now just set your feet and gather. Position here from the 48. He's looking downfield. How he just bails out of the pocket here. This is the toughest throw you've ever there. Spins away. Throws. I was a quarterback and I rushed out onto the edge and the end zone's right in front of me. There is nobody else I would love to have in front of me than Tevin Jenkins mm-hmm. leading. <laughs> I would be confident myself. I'm about to run this thing in because that guy will maul somebody for you. Um, I love that he was right in front of him at that last play and just kind of ran right there with him in the end zone. I thought that was really, really nice. Um, yeah. That's what I mean. I'm hyped. Man. I mean, even a, even in the preseason games, like even that little like stutter step juke that he like stopped after a full sprint and then sprinted again. It's that stuff that we always say about we like about other quarterbacks where they're not reacting to the defense. They're making the defense react to them. Like they're fucking with people. He's he's messing with people's heads. He's putting them. He's like t- he's manipulating things out there that he wants to be done, not the other way around. And that's what we've never seen that yet. No, and especially not this early on. And that's what, like when we talk about Patrick Mahomes. Um, Patrick Mahomes said it himself. He didn't know how to read a defense in his first year. Um, I'm so scared to get so excited, man, because it looks so good. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's that PTSD. That is the mm-hmm. literally only thing that's stopping me from yeah. being thrilled. Like, oh, Are you and- kidding? If he was on like the Patriots right now or if he was a Washington Redskins uh, commander's quarterback right now, like the hype train would be out of control for these fans. They'd just be like, no, dude, we're winning the Super Bowl this year. We're all just like, hold on, let's wait a minute before we get excited. I can't handle more. I can't do yeah. it again. We- I mean, a lot of things can happen from now until then. Um, if we had Matthew Judon on this team, I'd probably have him at 10 or 11 teams right now. Or, or if wins we right now. trade by the trade deadline. If you get, yeah, like, and I'm. The Bengals are like your huge, your huge like focal point right now. Like if they suck early, you're gonna get Trey Hendrickson. I can almost guarantee that. If uh, Max if the Saints coming up, if, I, I don't. There's no way you're getting Max. Yeah, Robbie. I don't. Think um, so. no. Oh, the other part is like I don't know if you're familiar with this, but the biggest like underneath the the rumor trade right now is C.D. Lamb to the Packers. So watch out. What? No, I didn't. I'm down to talk about Micah Parsons if you are. Because <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> that I mean, one. See, I, the only re- I like the Micah Parsons conversation. It's too nuanced because neither of us are going to reach a, a a yay or a nay on this. 
I think it's one of those yeah. things where like, maybe we save that for a different time because right now, Michael, Par- like we're going to have a, we could have a half an hour conversation about Michael like Parsons right now, and we will not change any minds really because we yeah. could totally see it both ways. Um, I want to be on the record first and I just want to keep pushing this Cameron fucking Jordan, man. The saints are going to suck so bad this year. I don't see how people think the saints are even like, I think the saints are probably like right next to the Panthers in terms of bad. Um, and I think the saints are going to suck early. They're going to go like two and four and you can get Cameron Jordan for like a fourth round pick, dude. That would be, I think that, that solidifies you so hard. Like that makes you so, cause he could slide inside. He could go back outside, but those are the pass rushers left in the market is, is my thing. And so like, where we were saying, like, if we're being optimistic, like you get Cameron Jordan week six, I predict two more wins. You you get Trey Hendrickson, I predict two more wins. I don't know. Did you see that the Bears uh, are not playing starters this Thursday yet? I did, yes. And, oh, um, you know, it's this Thursday, and then that's it, guys. And that's week one of the regular season. I mean, we're a couple weeks away, but this is, this is the last thing. And so, um, yeah, I did see that, though. And, and what do you think of that? Um, I had kind of back and forth thoughts. I mean, typically you don't play your starters in the last preseason game though, right? So, yeah, I think right now the bears are one of the luckiest injury teams. Also, I would say like they are getting out of this, like Kyler Gordon and forget who else just came back. Um, Jaquan briskers on like, right. Almost there. Patrick scales is like the only, yeah, those are like your three biggest injuries right now. And you're doing okay without them. And I think, Maybe don't push your luck on on your starters getting hurt. Like you, either way, obviously your depth guys might get hurt playing so much of this game, some important depth pieces. But <clears throat> I guess my thing is that like you said it's the last game, but it's still two weeks away from this upcoming Sunday. It's after Labor Day. Don't get me started on the whole Labor Day thing. Like the NFL needs to start Labor Day weekend. Why have we not done this yet? I don't understand. Every year, every year. <laughs> I say it makes me so mad that I have to go to like, I have work off on Monday and it's not the first weekend of the NFL. Why wouldn't you have done this by now? It's absolutely makes no sense. It it pisses me off every year. Yeah. It almost feels like they're giving everybody who doesn't like football a chance to have one last good time. Yeah. Yeah, Here's your family. Enjoy your family. And like, yeah, right. Right. All that fresh air and barbecue and go be outside and shit. Like shut up. Sit on my couch for four hours. It'd be great um, if we had football at that weekend for sure. It'd be amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea, I guess. And like they've reached their snap limit. And I saw an, uh, a tweet from Greg Braggs today. Shout out Greg Braggs. I would love to have him on if he ever sees this. Um, I, I made sure I hunted him down at uh, at the training camp. Gave him a handshake. Cool. What's up? So yeah, nice. Yeah, Greg's a good dude, man. Yeah, hope he hope he comes on with us one of these days. Um, but he put out that like dude, the practice was so chippy today that they're just like getting sick of each other and that they were just fighting and every other play was a fight. So I think it's just a good, you know, they started training camp early, so they need to stop it early. I think I, I don't have any issue with it. I don't know. Do you have any opinion on it? Yeah. You know, well, like they kind of kept the starters a little later than we thought last, last week. Right. Like they let them mm-hmm. play all the way through half. So, um, and I think that was the idea behind it. And the other thing I noticed is that, um, you know, the backups on this team, they've been playing some pretty damn good football, right? Like, we have a lot of effort from a lot of guys on the back end, and typically, I, I mean, that's really the main goal of preseason is to kind of figure out the back end of your roster. And there, I think for the first time in a long time, I'm sitting there and I'm kind of wondering who's going to get cut. Like, who's yeah. going to who's gonna get cut? It's been so obvious in the past because the talent level was so – in right so it's like no we need this guy we need this guy we need this guy there's one or two spots yeah. right now we're looking at it and it's like well how many wide receivers do we keep how many tight ends do we keep wait a second this running back's showing up you know what i mean i think even there's gonna be like a cornerback that we're gonna like feel bad for or you know there's some there's some linebackers that i don't even know is noah sewell still on the team is he healthy yeah i mean they, they, they just drafted him not too long ago yeah, so. they, i mean they played him last year so i'm wondering like where's noah sewell but then um io aya bung bamiga or something like that like yeah that guy I he's saw playing amazing D- daniel hardy's been playing awesome like mm-hmm. there's gonna be like like you said there's always like one or two guys every year you're like oh that's an unfortunate cut but then they never get picked up by a different team or um 
you know, like you're thinking of like the Travis Gibsons of the world, right? Like where you're like, oh man, Travis Gibson was so good. What happened? And then he went to Tennessee and did absolutely nothing. This year, I feel like there's going to be like three or four guys that it's, it's going to hurt a little. You're going to see like Josh Blackwell or like Greg Stroman or, you know, uh, Colin Johnson's going to suck. Yeah. Like cutting that guy or, you know, I, some of these linebackers. I give Colin Johnson some credit. When, yeah. uh, when Sean from Windy City End Zone uh, took me to training camp and uh, a big thanks to Evie for giving us those tickets and allowing us to go, um, we got there early, right? Like we, we made sure we were there on one of the first shuttles, right? As soon as I walked off the shuttle, uh, Swift Sports was right there. It was nice seeing him in person and kind of catching up. But then we're walking on the field and he, he told us, he's like, hey, he's like, those bleachers fill up pretty quick. If I were you guys, walk past all this stuff, just get there, grab a seat. You know what I mean? So we're like, okay, thanks for the heads up. And as we're walking on the field, there's one Bears player out there catching balls from uh, from the ball machine. It was number, mm -hmm. what is it, 80, 81? 80, Colin 80 yeah, Colin yeah. Johnson. Yeah, it was, and so I was just like, wow, that's uh, like that one's like I, I want that guy on the team. It's kind of yeah, yeah. I hope he like makes it. That's why I'm saying like this training camp might suck a little bit in terms of guys who get cut because we're gonna we're, there's gonna be some guys that we really like per, people personally like that are gonna get cut. There's a lot of defensive linemen that we kind of need to keep and hope that they pan out, you know. Um, but but shoot. that's what I mean. Even though it sucks, it's a good thing. This is what it's supposed to yeah. be. You know what well, I that's mean? What, that's so, what we've been talking about. Like these preseason games, they don't ever really matter. But there are things about like the team that you can learn about from preseason games. And right now, it's like everybody's flying to the ball, everybody's tackling. It's all three or four people gang tackling. It reminds me of like Lovey Smith days, where you would see like six guys pile onto the dude who has the ball. So it's good things, like you said. But it's going to be unfortunate when we see like one of the two or three players that we we really like get cut. So. Yeah, I mean, it always is, but so, you know, yeah. that kind of actually leads me into my next topic. So, you know, we've seen Khalil Herbert out there the whole time. I know they're not going to put DeAndre Swift out there. Um, last year, Khalil Herbert was number two and Roshan Johnson was number three, right? However, Khalil Herbert's getting closer and closer. No, to Khalil Herbert was number one. No, uh, Dante Foreman. No, it would have been oh, Khalil really? and then Dante. Yeah, okay. I think on the depth chart, it doesn't matter. So what I meant, what yeah, I meant yeah. was Khalil was on top. Yeah, Roshan yeah. was behind him, but Roshan was a rookie too, right? So yeah. uh, this year we haven't seen Roshan Johnson out there, have we? Not much, if at all. No, and so, so is that because he's part of that one and two rotation? They're trying to figure out if they want to keep Herbert because Herbert's kind of getting closer and closer to contract time. And there's just – there's one obvious flaw in his game. Listen, he's a good back, and I like him. He's not about the pass block. Or if he is, he's not about to do it very well. So it takes a dimension yeah. away from the offense. And so what do you think about that whole dilemma, Roshan Herbert, and why do you think they've been playing Herbert more in the preseason? I don't have that answer. I think – I think if Roshan Johnson has already like locked in his position, I don't really understand why it might be similar to a draft pick situation. Justifying your, your draft picks is usually, you know, part of the deal, which NFL teams do. And I don't really judge them for it, but I don't, I've never seen enough from Roshan Johnson fourth round pick. And I've never really seen him enough, even from last year to say like, man, I can't wait to see this guy as like a one, two punch. Um, I guess if there was something to like, why is it that, like you said, Khalil Herbert might not be as good of a pass blocker. Even as a rookie, we saw Roshan Johnson was a really good pass blocker. Um, that might be really important to them. And I think maybe the skill set to DeAndre Swift is a little bit closer with Roshan Johnson than it is with Khalil Herbert. Because like DeAndre Swift is a little bit more of like the shifty, you know, like screen back, set a, you know, set a block, delayed block, and then go out for a screen. Um, up and down runner. I think they're, I don't know. I think that's the only justification you could say. My personal feeling on it is that whenever I see Khalil Herbert touch the ball, that dude is a damn good running back, and he seems quick and explosive. The fact that the Bears last year went through, I think, like five running backs, I mean, just should kind of scare them and hint towards, like, just get as many of these guys' bodies on the roster as you can. And I have not, other than special teams, I don't think I've seen Travis Homer make a single play this preseason. So even that Tyson Bajan highlight you played at the beginning 
was Travis Homer dropping an easy, easy touchdown right. through his hands. So if I had it my way, it would go DeAndre Swift, Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson as the third. And really there's no reason not to have three running backs in today's NFL, just kind of taking turns. Um, a lot but, of people like Ian Wheeler too, number 33. He's kind of shown up a little bit. Yeah, uh, I feel like that might and be. Then, a, and then my follow-up question is also like, yeah. we haven't seen blasting game. Is there room for a fullback on this roster? Like you got to make this cut somewhere. You know what yeah. I mean? I think if you're rocking the three or four tight ends, just cut blasting game. I mean, I like Kari blasting game, but I don't think that he does anything ex- extremely special to the point where you can't get rid of that guy. Um Fullbacks are fullbacks. But I mean, if you're going to practice gonna... squad, right? Like, who's yeah? I mean, go Gerald out there and fullback. Cole Komet's Cole Komet. If he loses touches to Gerald Everett this year, I might get a little upset because at this point, I've seen through preseason, Cole Komet looks faster, leaner, like he knows what he's doing better, and Gerald Everett looks like mediocre. So, I don't know. And this is part of me is also watching too much JT O'Sullivan break down Caleb Williams and stuff like that. But oh, he was show- that guy does good work. He does do good work, but the two things he's pointed out so far is that Keenan Allen and Gerald Everett look slow. Like, both of them look like they're kind of coasting. And I don't know if it's them coming from California and, like, I don't, I'm not talking about, like, geographically, but, like, coming from the uh, Chargers and just kind of like, well, you know, easy breezy, loosey-goosey, like, a little bit more, you know, whatever. I mean, if you're going to keep Mercedes Lewis, Gerald Everett, and Cole Komet, like, throw Mercedes Lewis and, like, rotate him into the fullback position. Do three tight ends, have him come down and block because he's a good blocker anyway. I don't know. If you lose a roster spot for Khalil Herbert, for Kari Blasingame, or Travis Homer, that's we're talking about training camp cuts that are going to hurt. That one's not going to hurt. That one's going to piss me off because Khalil Herbert's going to go somewhere and be really good. What about Vilas Jones? What if they keep Vilas Jones? I'm okay with that just because he was going to stay on the team as a kick returner anyway. And then he now, if you get some value out of him as a running back and like a, a gadget wide receiver, I mean, regardless at this point, like he's probably the fifth or sixth best receiver on this roster okay. right now. It's Tyler DJ, Scott, DJ Keenan, Keenan Rome. Rome, right? Scott is the fourth, then I would say he's like locked in at yeah. that four. So then what you have Pettis, Pettis, Velas, Johnson, Alan Johnson. You're not keeping seven, are you? No, you're probably keeping one six. One of those guys has to go, yeah. That's what I'm but saying. Like, it, but again, has- as a returner, like you're not keeping DeAndre Carter just because he's a, a return guy, right? So like, so at that point, I think that's maybe just part of the roster construction. I think uh, that's a fun thought experiment. I'm going to do this pretty soon where I'm going to go through this roster and just kind of be like, who do we keep here? Right, because like I said, this is it's an interesting off season for that. It really is. And I don't remember other off seasons being this, you know, this uh filled with options. Competitive so, is it, I mean competitive yeah, is the word, but that's a right. good reason. It's a good word, right? And it's pretty much the answer to your question. Like that's why I don't mind just going out there running the backups in this next game. You yeah, I guess like, I'd like to see a lot more from some of these guys to be able to have yeah. a better idea and determination of who do I want to keep here and for what reason? Oh, this last game, especially if it's all backups, this game is going to determine who gets cut here. This is th- this is the game that's deciding 53 through 60 right now. Or like 50 to 55. Like the guys in that area, they're they're going to lock in their roster spots here. If the offense isn't good, but they still beat the Titans like 20 to 17, I'm not freaking out. It's week one of Keenan Allen and Roma Dunze and a rookie quarterback and Gerald Everett and two new linemen and a new running back. Like, I'm not freaking out, but just get the early wins. Go 500 in the first four games. If you start off one and three or 0 and four like last year, me and you were both going to say, like, they're, we're still going to be excited for the year after, but that season is fucked because you can't just start 0 and 4 and like expect to go to the playoffs. Like, can't shoot yourself in the foot, foot again. Dude, Matt Eberflus, the, the, it's, going to fall on him if that happens. Yeah. But what you just said made me so happy. It made me so happy because it's like I have nostalgia now. I had a flashback to Lovey being like four games at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> four, four game chunks. Just, yes. This four again. Games. This is nice. Four games. Yeah. Four times four is 16. That's a 16-game <laughs> season. You just got to win the quarters and the four. The, just, the football just, has four at quarters. At least two. Dude, it, 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 it's great. And I'm, I'm right there with you. Um. We talked about a hot start, I think, being important. I think it is very important. But you're right, at minimum, like, we need to 
stay 500 for, you know, a, a good chunk of the season. Like if we're three and three in week six, I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. want to be two and four. I don't want to be one and five though. Like, so okay. I have, I'm going to share my screen. So here we go. We got our, we got our, our season. Oh man. You know, this is interesting because like I had a number in my head picked out, but I mm -hmm. hadn't really looked at the season and figured out how I get to that number. I don't have this ready off the top of my head. And maybe you can find it. I want to go through our last year's prediction episode for the because we did this on an episode. Oh yeah, we did. We we're fairly... where we broke it down. I think we said eight wins last year, eight yeah. or nine. Yeah, no, we were seven or eight, seven or eight. Yeah, and I think we nailed it. So yeah, we did. So I mean, I can zoom in as well if you want to do this. But if you got a better prediction game graphic, okay, Tennessee week one, I think. Tennessee has just many moving parts. They lost Mike Vrabel. I think they're kind of licking their wounds. I think they're going to be one of the worst five teams in football. I think that's our first win. So one and zero. Oh. And this is coming from a guy who said we start like zero oh and one because it was Packers. So I was a. I'm not hey, scared to a, predict zero oh and one. Give me another minute. Talk about that mm -hmm. game. How do how do we get there? What's what do you think? Will Levis is not. I don't know. Will Levis is a is a 50-50 guy in my head. I do like Will Levis, but I don't think he's the best rookie or second year quarterback out of like the options that we're going to be facing pretty soon. Their receiving core is a bunch of twos and threes playing the number one wide receiver role. Um, I think their starting running back now is Tony Pollard. Washed up Tony Pollard right now. Um they have some young tackles, which that might help them. So they might have a, a couple of things going on on offense. And then on defense, they got Legereus Sneed. So that's a good upgrade. They'll probably lock down one receiver. But other than that, that defense is just Jeffrey Simmons and Legereus Sneed. Jeffrey Simmons might dominate a little bit, and he talks some mad shit already, um, if you remember that. But, oh, nice. Yeah, Jeffrey Simmons talked some shit. And I think on that note uh, – it's going to be a little bit of a personal game, but I'm still, I'm predicting the win. If I had to like give you a score, it's going to be like 26, 26, 20, 26, 17 bears. Okay. Well, credit to the CHGO podcast for putting this nice little graphic together. That's that awesome I graphic. Quickly, quickly snagged from Google. Yeah. It's a great graphic and CHGO does awesome work. Everybody knows that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, hats off to them. I also think, I mean, man, I can't, I can't do a week one loss. I cannot. It I just don't think it's also realistic. I like right. I said, it I, has I, to said I said, I said, zero one with last year Packers and everything. I don't. And see like you that said, it, you know, it's it's a quarterback that's not proven. It's a team with what a new head coach. Like they're they don't necessarily have their stuff worked out either. Um, this one's up for grabs. I'm, I'm take we're taking it like. Mm -hmm. One and zero oh to start the week, right? Yeah. So I'll I'll just open up a little notepad here on the side so I could just mm -hmm. keep track. And well, okay. What about week two, Houston Texans? I think we're both going to be on this one. Uh, I have Houston as one of my top five teams in the NFL, the, even more so than offensively. I think CJ Stroud's going to have a little bit of a sophomore slump. I'll call it. Like I don't think he I don't think he's going to just like elevate. Uh, one of my favorite people I listen to, Ben Solak, he's like progression is not linear. It never is for anyone. It's not just always a straight line, always up. It's like there's ups and downs and, and flats and plateaus. I think CJ Stroud is going to have a little bit of a flattened out season. I don't think it's going to be like, I'm not saying he's going to get worse, but don't expect him to go like from 22 touchdowns to like 38. He might go to like 27, 27, 28 or something. But I think this team is stupid good. Joe Mixon's good. The offensive line's good. I think they're going to have a top five defense more than anything. Um, I think this defense is going to be terrifying and i think this is where this is where like the texans being a year ahead shows and i think they kind of kick our ass a little bit i'm going to say it's like 35 17 texans i think we take a big l on this one yeah um I, you know I, I i'm not trying to just copy catch it here I, I i actually think the same exact thing though it's like you know that team is their arrow is pointing up right so i think we're gonna get smacked in the face a little bit do I think it's like a for sure loss? No, I, I think that could still be anybody's game in a way. However, I just don't feel good about it. 
I think the Texans wind up, you know, taking that W there and continuing their arrow pointing up. Um, and I can I can already picture myself watching that game, like sitting there going, like this should be a loss, but if we're competitive, that's a positive. And right. if we win, it's even better. So I'm not like, and if we get our asses kicked, I don't freak out. I'm not going like, oh my god, this team sucks again. Like no, no, no. This is like, this is one of those like, if it happens, great. If not. That's okay too. And but then I, I do have them bouncing back against the Colts and getting a W there. I think the Colts are a very beatable team. I'm not saying we're gonna sit there and walk all over them. However, you know, last year Anthony Richardson only made it a couple games, right? Mm-hmm. So I think there's still a lot of unknown there. Um, and I think that's a good opportunity for us to get back on our feet and come away with a W in that game. What do you think? I personally also don't understand this Anthony Richardson Pro Bowl MVP hype. Like, if you believe in Anthony Richardson to be a MVP, then you better believe that Justin Fields is going to be an MVP candidate. I mean, I guess. Uh, that's, like, that's I, a whole I, other discussion, but yeah. Yeah, but those are, like, the same people who are like, Justin Fields sucks, but Anthony Richardson, wait for this guy. Like, what, you have no idea if Anthony Richardson's any good yet. Really, you don't. Or if he's going to stay healthy. Yeah. I mean, like, this you is, know, he so far he's just the wrong one thing. Choice. Like, one thing is that he just hasn't been able to survive long put himself in some bad situations um everything else is unknown so yeah that's why like i said that's why i think that's an opportunity to get a w what do you think i'm with you i think it's closer than we want to think i also don't really think that the colts are that good for shane steichen's good i I like their coaching situation but other than that i mean their defense is very mediocre they've signed back most of their mediocre players kenny moore uh, grover stewart I mean, DeForest Buckner's still pretty good, but other than that, I can't really any like even tell you who the rest of their players are because they're not notable. Um, I don't even know where Shaq Leonard is. I don't think he's even around anymore. That poor guy. And then on offense, Michael Pittman. I mean, that's it. Fred Taylor, my, or not Fred Taylor? I always think he's Fred Taylor. Um, Philadelphia Eagles for Shaq Leonard. Yeah, I thought he got picked up. Who's their running back? I can't remember. I always, he reminds me of Fred Taylor. That's why I always call him Fred Taylor. The Eagles um, running back? Think no, no, no. Uh, Colts. Oh. Um, it suck. Yeah. That, oh, God. He's a good running back, too. And I yeah, no, no. Do you remember Fred Taylor from the Jaguars and the Patriots? He reminds me so much of Fred Taylor. I always call him Fred Taylor in accident. Um, but, yeah, they, they've got some weapons, I guess. Pittman, you know. I mean, some rookies, some young guys. but um, Jonathan no. Taylor. Jonathan Taylor says so Fred Taylor and Jonathan Taylor. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to agree. It's a, it's a win. It's closer than we want to think, but yeah, I don't think we can start 0 and three or one and two against the AFC South. That's a shitty division. So you started the first two. I'm going to start, you know, three and four. Yeah, so go for it. I still feel that the Rams, you know, although they lost a lot of pieces, um, I think that that's going to hurt them as far as, you know, trying to win a Super Bowl and trying to win the playoff games. I still think they're a damn competitive regular season team. Uh, Sean McVay is no joke. Matt Stafford uh, early on will still be healthy. Um, I think we're going to sit there and like Lovey Smith says, when me two out of four, I think this will be our loss and we're going to be two and two going into week four. So I'm going to give an L in week four against the Rams. I feel super differently about the Rams. I think the Rams are getting a top five pick in the NFL draft this season. Um, I think that's one of the worst defenses in football. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout more than anything. I agree with you 100% on the offense because that's why I, I don't think – I think the Rams, just because there's, the Rams are going to have like 35 points, I think this will be a shootout. And I think – Bears. This is going to be the offensive game in the first four games that makes people freak out. You know how, like, you know, if we watch the Texans whoop us, and there's going to be the the negative people are like, "Oh my god, this team sucks." This is going to be the te- the game that people need to like tone it down because the Bears are going to score like 38, 40 points, and everyone's going to freak out about it, and we're going to be like, "Yeah, pump the brakes here a little bit." I think this is a win. Okay. Interesting. I don't think the Rams are that good this year. Well, go ahead and take five and six. Start three, and off. One. three and one. Three and one um, for you. Uh, I mean, this is just Carolina. 
I think Carolina probably gets the first overall pick. I think we're playing three teams that are probably in the top five of the NFL draft this season in those first five games. That's why I'm like super optimistic about the hot start. Carolina sucks. There's really not much else to say. I mean, it's Carolina. Um, I think they're going to be better than they were last year, but that's hard not to be because they were an absolute shit show. Um, it'll be closer than we want to think, but I still think this is like a 32 to 18 game. I think we win. We start four and one. I also think Carolina's terrible. I think we're going to have a very high second round pick from them in this next draft as well. Um, I'm with you, man. I don't have much, many good things to say about Carolina. Uh, if they do pull out a win, I mean, it's just going to be one of those any given Sunday type of games, but um, I just don't envision it happening. And so, David, just to put this out there, you got them winning three games in a row at this point. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened in a while, right? Not under Matt Eberflus. Not under Matt Eberflus. So that would be a very, very, very exciting time um, to go into week six in London what do you think happens there? I think this is your loss. This is your near uh, around that time loss to kind of, I think it's going to be a very exciting, like early part of the season. You go into October getting super, super hyped and Oh my God, super bowl, super bears. And then the Jaguars kind of bring you back down to earth. I think the Jaguars are a super like eight and eight team every year. And then I think they're, their spurts make them look like a 10 and six team. And I think this is, we're going to play like a 10 and six Jaguars kind of team. And so I think it's going to be a Trevor Lawrence looks like a professional quarterback. Caleb Williams gets made look like a rookie a little bit. Like he can't just maintain it all the time. And I think this is where you get your second loss. So I got him at four and two through six losing to the Jaguars. Interesting. Cause I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking you catch them. You know, you catch them at a bad spot with the whole London thing. Um, you know, the time difference. Like I said, I think that that's really could be a toss-up game just because of that. I mean, they are, you know, it's a completely different thing with jet lag and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Jaguars are not all that good. I think they're really relying on Trevor Lawrence. And I think if he's not able to sit there and, you know, keep the ship not only afloat but like moving forward that there's going to be some pretty crappy losses on their record that they're going to look at and i just kind of i don't i don't see the season going too great for them um even though i don't know i'm just not very high on trevor lawrence and i I look at that quarterback class too and it's like all the other quarterbacks have already failed their initial role except for him and now he got paid and now it's like i don't know i just feel that there's a lot riding on them so i actually have them winning the third game you know um winning the second game in a row here in week six on my record, but uh, we got the same record right now, right? Mm-hmm. Four and two. Four and two. The other thing about London and it's one of your home games, which sucks. Um, you, we, we never even looked at this, by the way, we didn't really talk about it. You play the Titans at home, you play the Rams at home, and then you're playing uh, Carolina at home. So those are like even more reason for me that they're a little bit more relevant. And then two road games with Indy and uh, Houston, that's why Indy, I think, would be a little bit more of a risky game, but it's so close. It's a dome. It's like favorable for the Bears, if anything. The thing with London, I think this is Jacksonville's third year or fourth year in a row playing in London. They're kind of used to this as a franchise. So if there's any players Great there that point. have kind of, have kind of done this, this is like they're like, yeah, we do this every year. It's kind of it's kind of sucks. Let's just like take care of business, go home. Like the Bears, they might like there might be some like oh selfies at the London Tower, you know, like Big Ben and like. All that stuff this is like a big deal for them. And the, it's the Bears knowing the McCaskies are going to send them there on like a coach flight or something like that with freaking like pretzels or something. Make, so make them pay for their uh, <laughs> additional their own hotel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like no, <laughs> right. the, the Bears are just going to be like this. Fuck, you sucks. only got to carry on guys. Yeah. Guys, come on. This. Yeah. Um, no family. All right. Okay. Yeah. You make a good point there, David. So but that's, I that's think, where I'm at. I think we get a bye week. I think we yep. reset, and this is where I have them winning my, the third game of the season in my prediction because I think it's going to happen for Eberflus this year. I do. And so I think they come out. We've played well against Washington in the past, and um, I'm not very high on Jade Daniels either. So I think we come out and get a W against Washington 
right there in October, right before Halloween. And we've played them in that that same spot a couple times now. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I was even at the game, I believe, two years ago, right around mid October, right around Halloween against Washington here at home, where you know Mooney came an inch short of the touchdown. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, kind of a familiar team to face in this spot for us, but I, th- I think we get the upper hand on them and come away with a W. It's just something about Washington. The Bears just like kind of have their number. Everything that Washington is even good at, it never really works against the Bears for some reason. So I'm going to with you. I think that's a W as well on the road in October. I don't look, I don't believe in Jane Daniels. I don't even think he's going to be playing at that point. I think he's going to be hurt by then. Wow. Um, so, but then in week nine, I do have him losing to the Cardinals. Um, I, yeah, I well. think the Cardinals, yeah, I think the Cardinals are very underrated. I think they're a better team than a lot of people think they are. Yeah. Um, especially now, you know, they, they got Marvin Harrison Jr. too, right? So I think there's weapons there for Kyler. I think Kyler does have a little bit of a bounce back season and they're going to be a tougher opponent than most people think. I agree. I think they're sneaky good. They're sneaky talented. Coaching is really, really good. Um, they had no business even winning as many games as they did last year, and then they've gotten better too. So, um, yeah, I got you too. I got a L there as well. So, so we'll go ahead and take start my off my next two. Go. Man, you're gonna make me do Green Bay. All right, ten. I think it's an easy victory. I think at this point, I think New England is almost on purpose tanking at this point. I think they've just they're fire sailing. Um, every good player on their team is a young prospect: Christian Gonzalez, Drake May. Um, I think that's all I can name Christian Barmore, right? Like it's all young guys that won't make the make or break difference. And without Bill Belichick there, I can't consistently say that they are going to be a really well coached team and you're going to play a really well coached team. They might be for all we know, but I don't think so. So I think that's a victory there. I think that puts me at what five victories or six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That puts us at six, but, but I have an L here and I, I, I kind of, you know, one of it, one of the reasons is I'm biased. I've always liked New England as like my second team. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and I just don't see why like a situation like what happened with Houston last year can't happen in, in New England. Yes, you have a new coach, but it's not a nobody. You know what I mean? It, it's mm-hmm. a guy who's been waiting for this opportunity preparing. Um, I'm pretty high on Drake May. I think he, you know, he does have some um, development that he needs to go through. I think he may be playing well at this point in the season, though. So just because I can't, like, I, I'm not going to sit here and predict like 13 wins. Yeah. <laughs> I got to find these losses somewhere. And oh, this mine is are coming. Mine this are is coming. one of my losses. So yeah. go ahead. Uh, uh, Green it. Bay at home. Until Green Bay is defeated, I don't believe that we defeat them. So I got Green Bay at home coming in. Big brothering you, uh, like 27 13, doing everything right. We're doing everything wrong, and it just looks and rips your heart out and stuff. I just this is the PTSD talking again, but I got the L. I need to beat them. There we got to beat them. This is one of the things for me that's probably one of the most important parts of the season. Uh, preach change all you want. I want to change. I want to beat them. I got a W. I'm not going any other way. I can live me, with beating them next year. I can live with. I it. guess sure. Uh, maybe I'm not as patient as you are. I need this to happen. I'm not. Uh, I, yeah. I got a W at least yeah. once, right? Yeah. I, I, we, I, we ha- I just, I really think we have to. <laughs> it makes I, a damn I hate statement. Him. I hate him. <laughs> yeah, I do. I can't. I'm not going to do it. So you yeah. may be the logical one in this, which usually pans out to be the correct choice. I'm going to be the super emotional one in this and just be stubborn and say, no, fuck Green Bay. We're taking yeah. the first win against them. God, Week 12. I, I hope so. Week 12. I think we play the Vikings well. Yep. All the time. And I think we also take away a W there. That team is, you know, they had four draft picks this year. One of them passed away, unfortunately. The other one, their top draft pick, J.J. McCarthy, is now out. Jordan I don't Addison. Know what, Jordan Addison is out. I don't know what's going on. I mean, Justin Jefferson is going to have to have like 2,500 yards, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like for, for anything good to happen there. I, I just, I think this is also another W on the schedule. Yeah. What do you, yeah. Did you agree? Um, 
Yeah, I just don't think – I think Minnesota is going to be so much better than everybody thinks they are. I think they're predict- – like with what – any other team faced this, what Minnesota is facing right now, I think they'd predict like, I don't know, like three wins all season, four wins. I think you'd just be like wrapping up the season, right? Like JJ's out, Addison's are out. Like they still have Justin Jefferson. They still have Aaron Jones too. So I think Aaron Jones is going to do really well in that stadium and that turf and everything. I think Aaron Jones has always just been a pain in my ass too. Um, and then Brian Flores is still doing that defense, man. And that defense looks freaking good, man. So um, I think they also got Dallas Turner. They did get Dallas Turner. I think that defense is going to be sneaky good. Uh, I think they're still going to win like six or seven games. I just don't know if Sam Darnold by, I don't even know who their third string quarterback is at this point, because I don't know who JJ McCarthy's backup was. So I think we win not by a lot. I think it's closer than we think it's going to be like one of those uh, rock fights, but I think that's a win too. Uh, And I'm going to give it to him at home. Week 13. I think the lions still have their window open. Uh, ben Johnson sticking around there. That's, I think, the biggest factor that they're going to have towards uh, towards them being a successful team this year. I do feel they fall off the face of the earth at some point. I do feel, or they, at least they come back down to earth, maybe not fall off the face of the earth, because they're a talented team, you know what I mean? But I'm just mm-hmm. not a big believer in Jared Goff. Um, I know we always talk about those rah-rah mentality coaches and how that's great if you're winning but if you start out slow and you're losing that you know players only buy into that for so long and dan campbell i mean there's being aggressive and there's stubborn and reckless i feel he errs more on the stubborn and reckless side but i do think this team is still coasting this year i think they hand us a loss on thanksgiving yeah i'm with you it's a thanksgiving game i was so happy because i was going through this schedule a little bit earlier and I'm hosting Thanksgiving this year, and I can't fucking wait to just like eat turkey at my own house and just like just no no one talk to me for like four hours. I would love to see a win. And for some reason, the Bears, even looking back on it, man, like the last two years, the Lions are like 13 win teams every year. The Bears somehow, I think they're three and one in the last two years against them, if not four and oh. We um, play them really well too, even in the we, losses. Yeah, I mean, we we had a we, we had that twenty eight point comeback last year, and then there was yeah we went one on one with them I think the year before, but yeah. he, in that in that one loss I think Fields covered them up for like a hundred rushing yards in the first quarter alone. Yeah, they they like, play like, them really well. So, but either way, I agree with you though. Thanksgiving at home in Detroit. I think we take this L. We have to. I mean, that's just lined up for Detroit to just have a great great uh, Thursday NFL Thanksgiving. Go ahead with the next two then. Oh. It off week. So here you were asking me where I was being a little too optimistic. Here's where my losses come in, man. So this is on the road in Detroit. That's an L. I got San Francisco. We're on the road in December. In San Fran, probably going to be raining and stuff like that. San Fran's hitting its groove. Week 14, they're still fighting for like a first or second spot. That's like when San Fran's like the deadliest, man. At the end of the season, they kind of chill out because they're they're already locked up usually in the last like five years. And then they start kind of slow sometimes, San Fran does. like They'll, they'll have like that one 40-point shootout game, but then they kind of like have that weird lull. I think this is like San Fran's like, regular season i think kyle shanahan's on a fucking mission i think brock purdy might end up being like a top 10 guy this year even though i don't think he's that good but i think he's gonna just like be a top 10 i think we get the shit kicked out of us again right here. i couldn't agree more i got this as probably the biggest most obvious l on the entire schedule i mean that's yeah. that's a team that needs to win a super bowl in order to make everything worth it i mean they're so they're tough, man. They're pr- probably is the there a roster. hungrier team in the NFL this year? So. They're, they're probably you know best roster in the NFC. I mean, th- we beat them. That's going to be saying something, but I, I just yeah. don't see it happening. So, yep, yeah. L as well. Um, what do you think, Week Fifteen? So yeah, I had uh, I had us beat in Minnesota early on at home. I think you go into Minnesota and you lose here. I think this is like a sneaky little trap game. I think you're like skidding a little bit. You're zero and two last two games, and you're like, man, we got to get out of this. This is where like Bears fans kind of start freaking the fuck out. 
I think this is that like December new year's time where we always tend to freak out and then we make it close for the end of the season. So I think this is where you get your, your third loss in a row. I think also you're like, Oh, I think it happens for Matt Eberflus three wins this year. I don't think the three losses happen back to back early on in the season. It gives you a little bit of hope, but this is that like, we're past the point of firing the guy. We're past the point of like making any wholesale changes with this team. You just got to ride out a little skid. There's going to be a skid here somewhere. There's going to be a little bit of a rookie slump. And I think it's right here. It's these three games. You're zero and three. And and see, that's the difference I think between your prediction and my prediction this year. Is I don't, I don't have them at any point losing three in a row, mm, but, I, I, but I get it. Yes. And yes, this is their third loss prediction from you. I think we go in there. Um, and we win this one. I think we're two and zero against the Vikings this year. Like I said, I just I think they're the worst team in this division, and I see very little reason why we shouldn't be able to beat them both times. And so, yeah, that's that's the way I'm going. Um, however, when we get into Week 16, I know we played the Lions well. I you know, like I said, we went one on one with them two years in a row. I think this year they have our number, and I think Week 16, right before Christmas. Um, and then look, it's a short week there too. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think I think uh, week sixteen, the Lions get another win against us, and we are two and zero against the Vikings, but zero and two against the Lions this year. What do you think? Okay, I got the victory here for a few like logical reasons more than anything. It's like right before Christmas. It's uh, December twenty uh, second at that point. The Lions, when you look at their late season stuff, they usually tend to get tired and they really kind of slump off towards the end of the season. Also, Jared Goff in the snow in the middle of December in Chicago with Christmas right around the corner, all that stuff. I think that is a fucking shit pumping of the Lions. I think we beat the shit out of the Lions on this one. Interesting. Um, Because then I also feel like four days later, a short week against Seattle, um, that you know, I know, I know these would be two what home losses back to back, but I think Thursday night football that we lose to the Seattle Seahawks as well. I think that's going to be a really bad week for the Chicago Bears. I don't know, like I said, just in order for me to get to my prediction total, this has to be a loss, but I think this might be the one flip game mm-hmm. that, like, if they win, then it's going to be one win better than my prediction. You know what I mean? Because, like, if there's any real variable here or any real good chance to just kind of pull away a sneaky win, I think, you know, you mentioned week four we differed. I think this is the other one where there's a good chance here. I just, I just for some reason, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we lose to the Seahawks. Yeah, I think the Seahawks are way underrated this year. I think they're super solid. Um, and I got the loss here, too. But I do have them winning against Detroit. I think they, like, put their heart and soul into Detroit, and they – shit pump them and then there's just like that natural calm down you're so hyped up for detroit i don't think you can put two games back to back together like that however the bears have been kind of sneaky with that sh- stuff lately and then they love those like mini buys and stuff so um but i do have them losing to seattle here like you said christmas day i think that is right or day after christmas black friday. day after day after yeah black friday game cool. no, Bra- black no, friday is for- thanksgiving man no yeah. that's the day after christmas oh yeah what am i talking about yeah And then, like I said, it's important to me. Um, You don't have a sweeping the Packers. I do, damn you. Don't tell me. Don't tell me how to predict my insanity. I'm getting to my season win total here. And we are going 0-2 against the damn Lions and and 2-0 against the Packers. Now, what's more realistic is we go 1-1 with both those teams. Yeah, but for me, it's huge. I don't want to be 500 in this damn division. We're four and two in the division, We're sweeping the damn Packers this year. I want it. It's, All right. I mean, that's W. Fine. W. Um, I w I, got, I do have them going 500 in the division, mainly because I think 500 would be a great season in the division this year, with how good this division is, and um, I think at this point. The Packers are resting. Real quick, Agent Nine. Like, I'm I'm not telling you it's logical or it makes sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> He's acknowledging I, I his stupidity saying. here. I know what you're saying. I'm yeah. That there's I'm being crazy here. I don't yeah. care. 
I'm, I'll be logical with you. This is where Jordan Love is going to be resting because the Packers have locked up like the second seed by now. And so we're going to go in there trying as hard as we can for a wild card game after a long like mini buy because we're going to play 12-26 and then 1-5. It's like 11 days later. So that's where I think we do beat the Packers in Green Bay, but it's going to be like a little a big brother head pat like oh that's cute like we were resting we don't really give a shit this puts us at 14 and three and you guys just sneak into the wild card but this is where i got it where it's fucking condescending bullshit we go in where the one six matchup or whatever and we fucking beat them we knock them out of the playoffs this year you know that's where i'll go crazy with you you want to go full crazy i'll go full crazy because like two months ago we had a conversation i called you on my way home from work and I, and I think I pitched that scenario. I was like, wouldn't it be good if we just like end of the year, just like last year, yeah. last week against the Packers playing for that playoff spot. And this time we shut them out mm-hmm. and you were just like, yeah. And you're like, but like, I'm not so petty that I want the revenge. I'd rather be 12 and four and not give a fuck about that. game. Yeah. <laughs> and I was That's like, right, oh true. man, you take such a higher road than I do. Because I want that damn revenge. You know the best I mean? revenge to me would be if like the Packers went like seven and ten this year, missed everything, went fourth in the division, and the Bears were just like the first seed. I would just be like, suck matter. my dick. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. I guess. I guess that would feel better. But this is uh, my logical brain is they're gonna be so fucking good. They're probably gonna have like 13 wins by now. They're gonna be like, Well, San Fran's have locked in the first seed. We can't really drop down out of two. So let's just rest and then let the Bears have this one. It'll be like a adorable little like, oh, you tried, you know, Bart Simpson meme shit. And then this will be us like sneaking into the playoffs as like a wild card against the Packers. But um, I mean, maybe so it's, it won't feel good. It'll but it'll happen. So, David, this is this is exactly why I love doing shows with you or not even doing shows just why i love having a conversation with you because before we were doing this we were just having the same exact conversation on the phone regardless um we're both at nine wins no way we're both at nine wins yeah and like i said vegas has this team at eight and a half and we had talked about this scenario i think a show or two ago like is nine wins still a success and i think my answer was it's all gonna determine on how we get there yeah. And like that's it's really more of an eye test thing. Like, is it nine wins with Caleb being hurt? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like I, I don't know if I feel great if Caleb's hurt, like, or like you know, nine wins and you miss the playoffs, but there's clear steps forward in a lot of areas, or like are these losses, you know, fourth quarter defensive blowouts like we've seen in the past? Like, do do these uh crazy uh bad scenarios repeat again? And that's how we wind up in this situation. But damn it, me and you both have them at nine wins this year. We in do. totally different ways, which is funny. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which, either way, I think that kind of gives us the opportunity to say, like, this team is just good enough at this point to be, like, a nine-win team, which is good. We should feel probably pretty good about that. Like, a nine, ten-win season. And me being a little bit more critical of a, a few of those games, like, we probably should sweep Minnesota this week or this uh, this season. Well, that's that's a 10 win season right there. Sweep the Packers because it's like if I'm going to be happy about a nine win season, there's certain things I want to happen. You know what I mean? That's one of them. And that's why I kind of had that in there because for me, there's certain little things that are just important. And, you know, it goes more beyond just wins and losses and stats and numbers and this and that. I think I test has a huge role in this year. I think that's like honestly the biggest part. Yeah. I test because I'll save my 12 win prediction season thing for like next year when we've had 10 more draft picks added to this, to this team, right? Like when you have 10 draft picks next year, two second rounders and a first, Uh, Uh, I could imagine it, but that would suck. It would suck. It would be fun though, but it would suck. It'd be fun if we got the upper hand at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I couldn't handle like I Jordan Love. It's always that. I don't care. Yeah, dude. Being, I hope like I want... Jordan Love like gets his shin bashed in with a pipe, like fucking carry carry whatever. Back in the, like the nineties. So Bruja, that's what I'm saying. Like in my opinion, if they sneak out that Seattle win, they go ten and seven. Yeah. So same like, with me. If they that's what I'm saying. That there, the there's a game in there that maybe you know we're a little off about, and they could just do one win better. 
I don't see them winning 11, 12 games, though. I don't know. 